I'm Jamie Hooper with the Home Advantage team in Remax Select Properties and today we're here to talk about the outlook for the 2024 Vancouver real estate market but before we do that I'd just like to remind you if you get any value out of these videos enjoy them at all maybe click the like button make a comment down below or even subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching it on YouTube. So as I said, we're going to have a try and have a look ahead at the 2024 real estate market. And the reason I say try and have a look ahead is because it's impossible to forecast real estate. So many different things can affect it. I mean, over the last 10 or 15 years, we've had tsunamis in other countries. The tsunami in Japan impacted our market dramatically back in 2011, 2012. September 11th, 2001 impacted our market in a dramatic way and made our market take off. Uh, I'm not going to get into all the details of how these things uh, affected the market, but they did. Uh, the uh, interest rate hikes uh, back, uh, going back a year and a half now, almost two years now, have affected our market as well. And government intervention with taxes, like the foreign buyers tax that came in in 2016. So all of these things you can't forecast or or or, or look ahead to. They just they take you by surprise at certain times. What I want to do to try and uh, give us some kind of understanding and I'm, what I'm going to speak about at the end of this video is that Vancouver will always be a good long-term investment. We can see from the graph behind us that we're going to get over in a moment and the reason I say it will always be a, long -ter a good long-term investment is for all of the things we've spoken of in the past. We're in a landlocked city. You can't go north, south or east. That's why you see the cities, uh, all of the municipalities municipalities in the lower mainland densifying as quick as they can, uh, allowing for higher buildings, etc. All of these things because we are landlocked. That's what makes Vancouver a good investment. They talk about the city's already short of housing and 50,000 more people come here every year. How are they ever going to solve that? I don't think they ever are and I don't think they have an interest in doing that because most of these people that are in charge of that are Vancouver landowners and why would they want to cut their own throats? The interesting thing, so let, let's talk about the, the graph behind us here. So this is a 10-year graph for the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver. There are two real estate boards that service the Lower Mainland, the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver, and the easiest way to understand it is the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver covers everything north of the Fraser River, and Ladner and Tawasson. I don't know how Ladner and Tawasson got back in there whenever they divvied this up 75, 80 years ago, but that's how it worked. And then every, anything else south of the Fraser River, North Delta, Surrey, Langley, uh, Abbotsford, Mission, are all on the Fraser, Ral Fraser Valley Real Estate Board. So the numbers we're talking about here today are for the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver. And this is for all properties combined, houses, townhomes, uh, half duplexes, and condos. I'm going back 10 years to November of 2013, the average cost of a property was 665000 uh, It peaked out in May of 2022 at $1,257,000. And uh, as of today, we're at uh, we're, uh, in December, we're at $1,112,600. So these are, the uh, these are the average prices uh, on the Greater Vancouver Board. You can see, even with all the peaks and valleys we've had in there the last 10 years, the market always comes back and the reason it always comes back is because of the housing shortage. We flip, flip over to the next graph here. Here's how your condos done for the last decade in different areas. What we've got there is the current benchmark price, the one year, three year, five year and ten year changes. And you can see you're up dramatically. The high is Ladner. If you bought a, a condo, um, it's up 165 percent since there. And on the low side, we see West Van. You're still up 80 percent in spite of all these things. The real interesting thing on these these three graphs I'm going to show you quickly here is the one year change. Look how prices have gone in the last year. In Greater Vancouver, the price of a condo, in spite of the interest rates going up like they have and the cost of borrowing going up, is still up 6.2% in the last year. Flip over to the next graph about townhomes. Much the same thing, just different price ranges. Price increases the first year. Uh, still the big winner again here is Ladner at 152% uh, increase. And uh, the lowest on there would be Tawasson at 81. 
Then the last is for a detached house. Now, we've seen the least amount of uh, price rising uh, in the detached houses over the last decade, but nonetheless, you've still really done well. I'm Jamie Hooper with Remax Crest, and I should say with Remax Select Properties, I'm sorry, and the Home Advantage team, and we'll be back with another video soon.